Um, my name is Yu Yang Lee, and in my lightning talk, I'd like to share my learning experience to collaborate with a researcher, particularly focusing on data analysis and my thoughts around how librarians can help researchers adapt more open scholarship practice. Um, I had a great opportunity to work with a faculty member to identify a uh, the factors of trust in data we use. When I was asked to collaborate, the first part of the research process were already done, including data collection through a survey. My main role on this project was to apply statistical methods to analyze data sets in order to answer the research question. Originally, the principal investigator wanted to apply the confirmatory factor analysis, but we learned along the way that our data sets didn't meet one of its assumptions, so we had to explore other approaches like rest model and partially squares path modeling. From every research I'm involved, including this factors of trust in data reuse project, I learned that research is really an iterative and tangled process to arrive at a conclusion. But in the traditional scholarly communication, we as a reader can see only a finer product of the research, usually in an article format. There is no room to discuss about this complicated process, capture them, and share with other people. In order to make research more open and transparent, in the open scholarship movement, researchers encourage themselves to make their own research open, not just their finer scholarly article, but also the entire process and data sets to make them reproducible or replicated. I do believe that sharing the data analysis process with code and data sets is critically important because it provides evidence for the hypothesis that researchers usually argue. Many scholars have discovered that peer hacking or peer hunting can be found in many scientific literature, and they tend not to report any negative result. Open scholarship initiative like sharing code and data sets, pre-registration for both study and analytical methods could prevent the p-hacking practice and validate the reserve by reproducing or rep replicating them. As I mentioned earlier, our study also couldn't proceed with the original statistical method due to one of its assumptions, but we document every process and decision that we took and report not only positive result, but also the negative one as well. In addition, as a learner, I educate myself by actually doing to reproduce or replicate a study when there is a new theory, statistical method, or even study methodology. So there is a great benefit for learners. In order to document our process and decision from data import to communication about our findings, we chose R, which is a powerful and open source language for statistical analysis, and R Studio for the integrated development environment. Our studio projects enable us to keep all the files, including data, our scripts, analytical research, figure, and manuscript in a single place called a project and save our outputs and process so that we could come back anytime. I personally found it really useful to debug or try different approaches without messing around the original data sets or other process. Our markdown is good for reproducible papers because it uses version control for tracking changes and incorporate our text with analytic code or source code in one place so that other people can easily reproduce our study or replicate with their own data sets to validate our, our arguments. I strongly believe that there is a significant role for libraries to support researchers to facilitate their reproducible research, and many academic libraries have already helped their researchers through training and support around open source tools and open scholarship practice, as well as advocacy for the new ways to measure for the tenure and promotion process. I also wanted to highlight our role as a librarian to preserve all related to research to make sure it should be reproducible in the future because if one of them is missing, it's really hard to reproduce later. So thank you so much.